The Dragon's Law, written by Lila Ann Gray. Trom the dragon lived in a cave in the hills above a little village. It was a lovely place, and he was very happy. Everyone loved him, and sometimes the villagers would visit him, and the children would ask him to come out and play. Trom had lots of tricks. When he breathed fire out of his mouth and nostrils, the children would laugh so much that tears would run down their cheeks at his antics. Where Trom came from, every village had its own dragon. They would guard the village and be an important part of their lives. That was the dragon's law. Sometimes there would be a bad dragon who would be cruel and unkind. They would be banished and never be seen again. That was the dragon's law. All year round, Trom would be busy looking after everyone and keeping watch over the village and its people from his cave in the hills. He loved being their dragon very much. Sometimes Trom would walk down to the village, walking around it and making sure everyone was safe and happy. That was the dragon's law. He loved it when he was invited to a wedding. He was even invited to the christenings of the precious babies. These times were very special to Trom. At Easter time, he was asked to help the village children to find the hidden Easter eggs when they went on their Easter egg hunt. That was great fun. Trom loved chocolate, and the children would share their treats with him. In the summer, the village always held a fete. Trom was invited to stand on the village green and show everyone how he could breathe fire. On bonfire night, he was given the privilege of setting the bonfire alight. Trom loved watching the fireworks being set off and making beautiful patterns in the sky. The villagers loved Christmas too, and Trom would enjoy seeing the fairy lights everywhere. There were pretty decorations all around, and Trom was always invited to the Christmas parties, where the villagers made sure he had plenty of festive food to eat and lots of fun. There was one time of year that Trom dreaded. The villagers always seemed so busy, and that made them forget about their beloved dragon's birthday. They didn't even notice that one day a year, they wouldn't see him as he would just stay in his cave until his birthday passed. Then one year, a new family moved into the village, and the little girl called Tilly soon became Trom's very best friend. Every day, Tilly would go to see Trom, no matter if it rained, snowed, blew a gale, or was too hot to go outside. Tilly would always make her way to Trom's cave to see him. She really was a wonderful friend. One day, Tilly noticed Trom was very sad and very quiet. He was not himself at all, and she became very worried. What's the matter, Trom? Tilly asked her beloved friend. She wondered if he was ill. It was like his inner fire had gone out. She felt very anxious about him. It's nearly my birthday, sighed Trom. But nobody cares. Nobody remembers, and it makes me feel sad and unloved. Tilly did her best to cheer her dear friend, and they ended up playing a game of hide-and-seek. And soon Trom started feeling better. It was definitely one of their favorite games. When Tilly went home, she told her mummy and daddy how Trom was always alone on his birthday every year, and it made him feel so sad and unloved. They were very upset to hear this. They were sure there was something written about this in The Dragon's Law. Mummy and Daddy had a meeting with all of the villagers and explained the situation. The head of the villager looked in the book of The Dragon's Law, and in there it said that the dragon of the village must celebrate with the villagers all events, especially the dragon's birthday. That was the dragon's law. Everyone was so upset that they had forgotten such an important day. They were determined this birthday would be the very best for Trom, their precious dragon, so the plans began. A beautifully written invitation was given to Tilly to take to Trom. It invited him into the village on his birthday as there was going to be a great celebration on the village green. All the villagers would be there. The party would have music, dancing, a huge feast, and an enormous birthday cake. Tilly was so excited to tell Trom. He loved the invitation and he was so happy he caught hold of Tilly's hand and they danced and danced with the greatest of joy and laughter. On Trom's birthday, Tilly raced up to his cave so they could go down to the village together. Before they left, he opened Tilly's birthday present and it was a big, beautiful red bow tie. Trom proudly put it on and happily they walked down to the village hand in hand. As they approached the village green, Trom couldn't believe his eyes. Everywhere he looked, there was sparkling fairy lights. 
There was tables of food, and right in the middle was the hugest and most magnificent birthday cake that anyone had ever seen. All around the village green were tables and chairs for the villagers. There was a huge fluffy carpet for Trom to sit on. Everyone was wearing their party outfits, and they all admired Trom's beautiful bow tie. As Trom sat down on his carpet with Tilly at his side, one by one the villagers came to give him a little gift and to wish him a very happy birthday. Just before Trom cut his birthday cake, everyone sang happy birthday, and Trom felt so happy and so loved. There were seven candles on the birthday cake for Trom to blow out, as that was the number of years he had been looking after the village. Trom blew them out very gently in case his fire breath burned the table. He and Tilly started to cut the cake for everyone. It looked so delicious, and Trom knew he was having the most wonderful birthday ever. The head of the village stood up and thanked everyone for helping to make their beloved dragon Trom's birthday a success. He knew that the dragon's law was always right, and to celebrate their dragon's birthday was a wonderful way for the whole village to show Trom how much he meant to them all. They never again forgot to follow the dragon's law. Come back to Lulu's for more story time.